All right, here we are in Adobe After Effects and I already imported the files that I need to use for this tutorial. These two files you can download with the link in the description. This is a backplate and the footage against green screen. Then I have a grunge texture, just Google a grunge texture. It doesn't really matter which kind of grunge that you use. And then I have a skeleton picture. It's uh, not perfect. Um, but yeah, it will do the job just fine because we don't really need it that much. Uh, so yeah, find these two images, download these files in the description and let's get started. The first thing that I will do is drag my background video in a new composition. We'll right click here and composition settings and rename this to main comp. So we know this is going to be the comp that we're going to set up everything. Then I will go to my footage file and I will drag this into a new composition and right click composition settings and green screen uh, footage and click OK. And right now we're going to remove the green screen. If you really want advanced uh, stuff on green screen, check out my other tutorial that goes more into depth on removing green keys. Uh, currently we actually recorded this outside with a portable green screen and you can actually see that the light is coming through. So it's not thick enough, but it's uh, it, uh, hopefully uh, it will do the job just fine. So first of all, I will pick my pen tool here and I will drag, a, well, I will draw around my actress here. I'll draw, draw something like this and just make it very roughly something like that. Press M on the keyboard and click on the stopwatch for the mask and then just move forward and yeah, offset your mask the way it needs to be offset. So uh, something like this, we just need to do it very roughly because right here I noticed some mistakes while doing the green <laughs> while doing the green key. So and that's why I'm doing this. Just remove as much as you can. All right, I think this will do fine. I will just uh, toggle this down. And now what we'll do is click on my footage, go to effect keying right here and key light 1.2. Then I will pick with my color screen color right here. I will pick a green color that seems to be um, overall the correct green. I will click right over here, zoom in a little bit, and then I will change the view to a screen matte right here. Then I will go into the screen mat and just increase this part to something like 35 and this to 75 and um, maybe even a little less, maybe like 70 and then you have like a okay key. Of course you can do a lot better jobs with uh, keying um, but for this I, will, I think it, it will do fine. So go back to the final result and we have something like that. Now go back to your main com, go to the project manager and the first thing I will do here is click on my 8 bits and change it to 16 bits so we have a little bit more to work with and click OK. Then I will drag in my green screen footage on top of my background video and we have something like that. I will also press S on the keyboard and just scale it up a little bit so the head isn't completely in the shot because I noticed some mistakes there with the green screen. So we'll position my key like so and we have something like that looking great. Now I will click on my green screen footage and go to effect color correction curves and just do some minor adjustments so that my video actually fits a little bit better with the background. I will add a little bit more contrast and I will go into the red channel and take away a few of the reds and also go into the blue channel and maybe for the highlights we'll keep it very low but maybe a little bit more in the shadows and for the green let's take away a little bit of the green and let's see if this is looking better I think it could be done better but for now it will do maybe a little bit more red and go to effect color correction tint as well and maybe change this to something like 35 and that will also fix it a little bit. Also, we can go to our green screen footage again, go on the footage and for the screen shrink, I will set this to minus one for the softness, also one. And I'm also going to apply an effect uh, called style, well, sharpen and sharp mask. Right here, we'll enter something like 75 and that will sharpen up my image a little bit better. And now we'll have something like that. Of course, we'll have to put the sharpness before uh, we key out our green screen and we'll have a better result. Um, the black and white, I think it's a little bit overdone, so I'm going to delete it and keep it colorized like so. Okay, so uh, let's keep it as it is right now and let's start with uh, the next part of the tutorial. I will create a new composition and I will rename this to Transition Luma Key. 
also make it full HD and just click OK. And then right here, I will create a new solid layer. Make sure it's black, completely black right here. Click OK, make comp size and click OK. Then I will hold Control and press D on the keyboard to duplicate that solid layer. Now I will go to solid and change the color to white. So for the settings of the solid layer, uh, change it to white. And then I will pick my mask tool right here, the ellipse tool. And I will make like a circle right over here. So this is the part where the impact is going to start, something like this. Press M on the keyboard and click on the stopwatch for the mask path. And then just, uh, just go a little bit further into time and then double click on your mask and just make it bigger. Holding shift and control is going to allow you to do a perfect scale like this, uh, starting from the center out. All right, so now we have an animation like this. Of course, in the beginning, you can see that our circle is on the screen. To fix that, just click on your solid and then press M twice on the keyboard. And you're going to reveal all the options for the mask right here. I'm going to mask, uh, click on the stopwatch for the feather and the expansion. The expansion will bring it down here and the feather is something like 130. And then just increase it like right over here. I want to increase my feather to 1000 and my expansion I want to set it at zero or actually let's set it at 500 or this might be a little bit too much like 100 and zoom all the way out okay there we go we get something like this looking good and then I'll also create a new adjustment layer and I will rename this to displacement and here I will add a turbulence displace and um, this is going to just affect my transition a little bit you can see that it's getting uh, it a little bit more rough and then of course for the size we can trim this down and increase the amount here to get something like this hold alt and click on the stopwatch for the evolution and write time times to 50 maybe and play this back okay so this is looking great uh, let's continue with this effect I'm going to close these down and select all of my layers and go to layer pre-compose and this is going to be my uh, luma matte transition and then I'll also go to the project file and import my um, grunge layer right here so I'm going to bring this below um, my luma mat right here and I will click on my effect of all my layer and go to effect colorize and make it thin so it's completely black and white and then if you're going to the luma mat and go to the mode here if you don't see that you can toggle the switches right over here and change this to a linear light uh, well linear light uh, that's right over here we're going to get this kind of effect so now we have a transition that is really uh, looking a lot better uh, you can see that we have some variation in here of course you can go in here um, and add a little bit of curves um, but we'll do that later just go to the main comp here and we're going to drag our luma math transition in here right now we want everything that's white to actually um, be not visible because in this uh, normally everything that's white is going to be visibly uh, visible and everything that's black is not going to be visible uh, if we set this at the luma mat you can see what i mean right here we don't have the actress and she appears uh, with the animation when it turns white we actually want it to be inverted so that she is on screen and then she dis uh, disappears because of this effect uh, so now we get something like this and this is looking great okay uh, so what I will do now is click on my luma mat here and go to effect color correction curves and here I'm going to add like more contrast to my scene something like this um, I'm actually playing around with everything like that and actually I imported the wrong uh, mat here so I'm going to the project manager click on my transition luma key this is what you want and hold alt and drag it on top of your luma mat transition just make sure it's also selected at first so select this one and this one hold alt and drag it over there and now we have uh, the correct file here okay so there we go now we can play around with the contrast a little bit so pick something that you like and now we have a, a nice um, disappearing uh, well she is disappearing with this nice grunge effect to it so this is looking great what we'll do here is click on this green screen footage and actually um, before we do that click on the transition itself and go to effect blur and sharpen and add a Gaussian blur if you are working with older versions of After Effects it's possible that you might need to use a fast blur it's actually really the same um, they just decided to change it to Gaussian blur instead of fast um, but yeah let them do their job and we'll concentrate on finishing this project so right here uh, I added a little bit of blur to fix a little bit of the issues there click on the green screen footage you go to effect and go to generate and add a fill to it 
Here for the fill, I'm going to change it to a really dark or um, kind of brown color, like so. And this is going to be like um, the 3D feel of our um, body. So we actually want the body to disappear, but we also want to have like a glimpse of the inside of the body. And uh, this is the back layer of that. So we are going to select both of these layers and press, uh, well, hold control and press D on the keyboard to, uh, to, du to duplicate these. I'm also going to change the color to something different. So we actually see visually uh, which layers belong together. For the green screen footage, I will delete the uh, fill right here. And right now you can actually uh, offset this a little bit the way you want it. Actually you want to offset the uh, last one. So you actually uh, get some delay in here and you're going to see some kind of brown parts before she leaves. So right here we are getting a 3D feel. Uh, we can also go in this one and maybe add a lot more contrast. It's completely up to you. And then, of course, you don't need it to exaggerate that much. You can also add a little bit more here. And now you get something like this. Of course, in my original layer, I added a denoiser. As you can see, uh, the footage is going to be very noisy. Uh, you can fix that maybe in the green screen right here. So lowering this to 60 might help. Not sure. Uh, but I actually added a denoiser, so uh, you should do that as well if you have the chance. Because I'm not sure if After Effects comes with one. Uh, it does have the denoiser, but I don't think it's that good. So I'm, I'm going to apply it. Go to Effect, uh, Noise and Grain and Remove Noise right here. Remove Grain and do it to Final Output. Just put this below, well uh, above everything. And this should solve that problem. Okay, so it's a little bit better, but you have plugins that do this and they're doing a better job. Okay, so uh, this isn't actually the part of the tutorial. I'm going to delete this because it's going to make my uh, footage going and uh, going slower. So I'm going to preview it like this and you can see it disappearing right here. So now what we want to do is add the skeleton to it so it can be inside of the body. So what we'll do is go to the project file and go for the skeleton and add it to a new composition. And then right here, what I will do is actually uh, mask out this part here, the top part. And then I'm going to uh, also uh, click on my pen tool here and also draw out the uh, the arms right here. So we don't actually need these. And there we go. And then subtract this from the image. We get something like this. Click on the image and go to layer pre-compose. And we're going to rename this, move all the attributes. Uh, to skeleton and click OK. And then I'm, I'm going to play around with this a little bit more. Click on the skeleton, go to effect and go for, well actually I'm going to right click composition settings, skeleton comp, OK. And then go to effect keying right here and we're going to click on the extract key. And now what we want to do is actually just draw, click on uh, the white part here and just drag this in until you see something like this. And actually I want to copy this effect, so I'm going to cut it, so hold control, press X on the keyboard. I want to open up this composition, I want to paste it on here, so we don't need it in this composition. We need this composition to be as clean as possible. Go back into this composition and maybe delete a little bit more right here, so we can see uh, that we don't have anything in the frame. Click on the skeleton, and now we're going to add a cho uh, choker matte choker and apply this to the solid layer uh, well to the composition right here and we get something like this looking great go back to the main com go to the project manager and we're going to add the skeleton right here now what we want to do is actually um, we're going to solo this part here and I'm going to set the track mat at no track mat and go for the skeleton also solo this and we want the uh, skeleton to actually resemble the um, motion of um, of our actress right here so I'm going to drag this around make it bigger and yeah just position it like right over here I think this will do fine I'm not sure if the head will be bigger or not um, but we'll see how this is going to work and then I'm going to click here on the puppet tool right here it's a puppet pin and I will click on the pins right here so I'll create a few new pins let's see what we can do so right here I want everything to be moved and that way you can actually make it fit the same motion. And automatically it's going to create keyframes so you don't have to worry about that. Go a little bit back into time, maybe position it right over here. Actually right here it's not that important. And then at the end we're going to move this all the way right over here. And of course this doesn't look too good right now. Uh, 
Okay, so we had a little mistake in the keyframes, just select both of these. If you ever have like a glitch or well, uh, anything that you don't really understand, just click on your keyframes, go to interpolation and just change this to linearize, uh, well linear, and that's going to solve that problem. Like right now it was actually doing more animation than it was necessary to do. Uh, so right now we get something like this and I think that we really have uh, what we need for this effect. I will close this down and solo these two layers and I'm going to set this back to Luma Inverted Math. And then for the uh, skeleton actually, I also want it to be right here because currently we have a gap here so that's actually not what we need. I'm going to my keyframes, move them right here, click on my pivot tool and drag it back here so it's actually fitting the view here. I'm also going to jump into my Luma Matte transition here and I'm also going to offset my white uh, solid here so we actually get the effect while she is falling down. Okay, there we go. This is what I was actually looking for. And right here I want to offset this body part a little bit more towards the back. Okay, really cool. And I want it to be disappeared right here. So I will jump into my Luma Math transition, press U on the keyboard, and actually I want to tuck this in here. And go back and let's see our animation. Okay, so she's disappearing right here. So this is uh, kind of what I'm actually looking for. So I'm going to close down my Luma, uh, my skeleton right here. I'm going to duplicate the transition Luma key. I'm going to put this below my, well, uh, on top of my skeleton actually make it visible for now. And right here I have my transition. Now we have one problem right here, it's black, right here it's white. I want it to be black on both sides and just white in the center. To do that click on the transition right here, go to effect, go to color correction and colorama. And right here we can do some really cool stuff. We can go into the output cycle and change this to a ramp gray. And now we can drag our white to the bottom right here and we're going to get a result like this. Now you can of course uh, add more white to actually just add a white point right over here and play with it like this. And this can give you a little bit more white to play with. But now if we're going to set our skeleton here to a luma mat, we're going to see our skeleton just for a portion of the time. So right here it's like a 3D layer that is uh, also uh, moving along with the same animation. Of course I will go to the Luma key here and I'm going to add some blur. So I'm going to blur sharpen, Gaussian blur and maybe set this at 30 um, or maybe 15. And I'm also going to add a curve to so color correction curves and add more curves to it. And there we go. And also for the skeleton I'm going to add a curves right here and I'm going to make it darker so we have a nice dark uh, skeleton. Also color correction tends to make it more black and white and just lower the percentage here so we get a clean look like this. Also go for a sharpen image so in sharp mask and increase it right here. Duplicate that in sharp mask and maybe set it to 25 and set this at uh, 50 and we get a more popping effect for the skeleton and now we're getting something like this here. And let's preview this for now. Well, make this a pre-comp layer, pre-compose, uh, skeleton transition. And I'm going to um, add an effect called key and key, uh, extract again. And now we're going to extract some of the blacks and now we're going to get more of a neutral transition. Okay, I thought the, um, the blacks were, yeah, too obvious. Okay, so now let's do a preview in full resolution. Okay, so this is a pretty cool result. What I will do for the skeleton is actually I'm going for the hue and saturation and I want to change my yellow to be more um, kind of brown. So I'm going to make it darker right here. Maybe add less saturation. Actually, I still want it to be quite obvious. So maybe we can make it more white. And play around with different settings, but I just thought it was a little bit too yellow. 